Rob here at eTrailer.com and today you're going to be taking a look at the Drawtight Class 3 Custom Fit Trailer Hitch Receiver on our 2019 Nissan Rogue. Now this is what our hitch is going to look like once we have it fully installed. It's going to have a really clean appearance because all we're going to see is that receiver tube sticking out. The cross tube is going to be hidden behind the bumper so it'll have a nice factory look to it. Our hitch is going to give us a 2 inch by 2 inch receiver tube opening so we're going to have a really wide variety of options when it comes to accessories. Whether we want to mount up a bike rack, a cargo carrier, or a ball mount so we can tow a trailer. Now the way we're going to mount any of our accessories is through the hitch pin hole here on the side. It is going to accept a standard 5 8 pin and clip. Now these are not included in the kit but you can find them here at eTrailer.com. Now the secondary hole towards the opening on our receiver tube, that's going to be exclusively for the J-pin stabilization device. Now the way this is going to work is we'll put the threaded section into the hitch pin hole and we'll secure it down using the nut. And what that's going to do is that's going to draw the pin in and it's going to cause that hook to go into that secondary hole and it'll apply pressure to our accessory, keeping it from rattling around and making noise when we're driving down the road. Now there is also a lock that goes with our J-Pin and you can find it here at eTrailer.com. Now if you are going to tow a trailer, you need somewhere to hook up your safety chains and our connection point is going to be a loop style welded at the bottom of the receiver tube and you can see we got plenty of room to get most size hooks on or off and the fact that the hitch pin is just slightly offset means that there's less of a chance of our safety chains interfering with our pin and clip. As far as the weight capacity goes, our hitch is going to have a 350 pound tongue weight. That's going to be the maximum downward force of the receiver tube. And that's going to be good for those larger bike racks, even up to four or five bikes, or possibly a cargo carrier so we can get some of that dirty, nasty gear out from the inside to the outside of our car. Now, as far as the gross trailer weight rating goes, it's going to have 3,500 pounds. That's how much our hitch can pull, including the trailer and everything we have loaded on it. But you want to make sure you double check the owner's manual because you don't want to exceed the manufacturer's recommended weight. I'd like to give you a few measurements and these are going to help you whenever you're looking for accessories for your new hitch, like a ball mount, a bike rack, or even a cargo carrier. From the center of the hitch pin hole to the outermost edge of the bumper is going to be right about six and a half inches. Now that measurement is going to come in handy when you're looking at folding accessories to make sure you have enough room and that they're not going to come in contact with the rear bumper. And from the ground to the inside top edge of the receiver tube opening, it's right about 14 inches. That measurement is going to help you out when you're looking for a ball mount so you can find the appropriate riser drop to match up to your trailer. But also at that height, I would recommend a bike rack or a cargo carrier with a raised shank to get a little bit more ground clearance out of it. But now that we've seen what our hitch looks like and gone over some of the features, let's put it on together. To begin our installation, we're going to start at the back of our Rogue and we're going to come to the driver's side. Now we're going to have these plastic panels that are covering up the frame rail on each side and we're going to need to pull these out. So if we look on the edge here, we'll have a push pin. We'll have a few going along the outer edge. So you want to take a flat blade screwdriver, pop out the center section first, and that's going to relieve the tension off the push pin. Then we can come to the base and pull the rest of it out. We're going to work all the way around the edge, pulling all the push pins out. Now we're going to have one more plastic fastener. It's going to be all the way towards the front of the vehicle, right by our rear axle here. Now we're going to take a Phillips screwdriver and we're just going to very loosely and gently unscrew that push pin. And once that center comes out, should be able to kind of pull down on the panel a little bit while we're unscrewing it and it'll pop out. And we can pull the panel down and we'll set it aside. Now on the passenger side, we're going to have another appearance panel we're going to have to pull down and the push pin fasteners as well as that plastic fastener are all going to be in the same position. So we'll pull those out as well. And then we can pull this panel down and set it aside as well. And with the panel out of the way, if we look up on the passenger side, we'll have this tie down hook here. We're going to have two bolts on the bottom of the frame and we're going to have two on the inside. We need to pull all of those out. So we'll grab an 18 millimeter socket and pull the bolts out. And we'll pull our tie down hook down and this is not going to get reinstalled. Now we're back on the driver's side frame rail here and you'll see that we have three threaded holes that are on the bottom of the frame. 
Those are going to be our three mounting locations on this side. I'm going to come back and I'm going to spray a little bit of spray lubricant into the holes. Then I'm going to take a nylon tube brush. I'm going to clean them out, make sure there's no dirt, debris, or rust in there. And that way we make sure that we're not going to cross thread the bolts when we put them in. You want to clean out each one of the holes, the three on the driver's side, as well as the two on the passenger side. Once all your weld ends are clean, it's probably a good idea to grab one of the bolts out of your kit. I'm just going to make sure that I can easily thread it in by hand and that they're not going to cross thread. Go back and double check each one of the holes. And since it's going to be easier to show you now rather than when we're trying to hold the hitch, when we put our hitch up, we're going to use a bolt and we'll follow it up by a conical tooth washer. And when you put them on there, you wanna make sure the teeth are facing up towards the hitch and up towards the frame. We'll go through the hitch and we'll secure it into the frame, into the weld nuts. Now with the next set of hands, we're gonna lift our hitch up. You wanna lift it over the exhaust on the driver's side first, and then we can lift it up, lining the holes up in the frame with the holes in the hitch. And you just want to get at least one bolt started on each side. That way the hitch will hold itself up and we can get the rest of the hardware in place. You want to grab a 19 millimeter socket and snug up all your hardware. Then you want to make sure you come back with a torque wrench. I'm going to torque all the hardware down to the specified amount in the instructions. And we'll go back and repeat that for any remaining hardware we have. We can take our passenger side panel and we can put that back in place. We'll just line up all the push pins and we can start replacing the fasteners. Now our driver's side panel is not going to fit with the hitch in the way. Now you do have the option of trimming it out so it can fit, but for today, we're gonna to be leaving this off. But that'll finish up your look at the Draw Tight Class 3 Custom Fit Trailer Hitch Receiver on our 2019 Nissan Rogue.